Right guys, welcome back to the Golf Mallet YouTube channel, the number one place for reviews, comparisons, 300 yard drives, and much, much more. Today, I'm at King's Golf in East Grinstead, and I'm going to be reviewing the brand new Callaway Rogue ST Fairway Woods. I've got the Max D with me today. Let's put it up on the track, man, talk about the new technology, and see how far it really goes. Let's do it. So exciting times in 2022 with Callaway and TaylorMade announcing their brand new families for this year. And Callaway have gone back to the Rogue range, but they have speed tuned it. And that's why it's called Rogue ST. If you haven't seen our initial review of the drivers, we were very impressed down at East Brighton Golf Club. And now I've got the Fairwoods. And in all honesty, it is very, very similar in the technology. So I'm not gonna talk about it too much, but what they have talked about with the technology, apart from the speed tuned weight cartridge, is it's all a refinement. So you've been seeing in the Epic and in the Mavericks, things such as the flash face, the speed frame, that's all been refined. That's all been improved, just incremental differences because they can't make it a completely brand new thing every single year. And they're very comfortable and confident with what they've been doing over the last few years. So they don't need to shy away from the flash face or the speed frame, anything like that. They're just making it even better. The one new thing is that tungsten weight cartridge, is that little gold colored piece that you saw low and deep in the driver at the back of it. The difference here is it's positioned differently. So it's positioned more at the front to optimize that CG. So really interesting there because you can see the most, the most pinnacle piece of technology they are putting in different spots for different clubs. Some would say a three wood in the driver isn't that different, but the position of this little tungsten weight cartridge, completely different. They have three models of the Fairwoods this year and are very similar to the drivers. So you've got the LS, the Max and the Max D. The Max D is the draw bias club. I've actually got this one today, the most forgiving high launch model in the set. The difference with this and the driver is that the driver does have the uh, triple diamond version as well. So drivers have four options, this has three. And we're just gonna hit it here today. I could just go really deep into the data, but with Fairwoods it's a bit different I think because Data are all gonna be largely the same, but it takes a long, long time to find a fairy wood you like. I still haven't found a fairy wood that can actually go in my bag consistently. Fairy woods are very, very difficult, and I don't know why. You, you guys tell me, please, because it's so difficult to find one that you can just click with, and you have to click with it straight away. So I put it here on a signature hole at Pebble Beach. We can still get some data for it, as you can see, with club speed, distance, smash factor, spin rate, and we can just see how forgiving this club really is because this isn't the easiest shot in the world, but we'll find out. One thing that I love instantly from these fairwoods, and it is also similar to the, uh, the range that Callaway do have here, is it just how it looks down at address. They have changed it, so now all clubs are that little matte finish, and they do look so much better than the Epics. I really, I cannot stress this enough. I didn't mind the Epics, but having a glossy finish, I think is a thing of the past, personally. It's just a bit too shiny, and ha what they've done with this finish, a slightly larger face as well, just makes it look so much more forgiving. I can instantly tell that this is a draw bias club, just the way it by it sits. So if you are looking for a club that's gonna try and fix your slice, I shouldn't mention that slice word, but to fix a slice, this is definitely one that you should look at. Now, it'll be interesting what speed I get with this, because, I can hit a three wood, but I'm not good at it. I'm just gonna aim for those bunkers and just see how it goes. So I think that's a pretty good start, isn't it? Actually a really nice draw, just landing in the fairway. That feels really, really good. I will be honest there. That one probably spanned quite a lot, just because this is a high launch spinning model. Let's have a look. Yeah, so 3000, that's actually pretty bang on there. If you look at those numbers, I think we would all be really, really happy with that. Launch good, carry at 250, for a shot. <laughs> and I'm being completely honest here, I haven't hit this club at all yet. That is the first one out of the bat. And I would say I couldn't really hit it much better. But you can see there, with a quite a high launching, pretty good spinning club, this isn't gonna be a club, especially the Max D, that goes absolutely miles. I think of about 260-ish. Would be my bang on. I would say that's probably what I would think it would be for carry because it's high launching, it's just gonna kind of stop dead. So let's see if I can do that again. So that one there, although it's gonna be straight in the fairway again, this is interesting, isn't it? <laughs> I did not hit that one well. I hit that one a little bit out of the heel. I maybe expect it to be some diminishing distance, but if you look at that number there, 
The main thing I want you guys to focus on is that smash factor being 1.4. So you can see it's not, not optimal. But apart from that, if you'd have a look at all the other numbers there, at 250 carry, 2,950 RPM, all those numbers are very, very similar to the, the first shot that I hit. And then looking at that map, then literally you could, you could throw about a 50p coin and probably be in the same spot. That one wasn't the best, as you can see by that lower flight. Is that gonna crawl in the bunker? Unfortunately, that crawled in the bunker there. A little bit low on the face as well, but as you can see by that spin rate, but in all honesty, Smash was up in that one compared to the last one. And I actually thought I struck that worse, which it gives you feedback, it really does. For a club that is the most forgiving club out of the trifecta of the Rogue ST, it still gives you feedback, which is really important for a three wood. You still want to know where you hit it, but those three shots there are still going quite a long way. And now that my club head speed is climbing up, I could probably try and be a little bit more aggressive here because maybe I should be aiming for the tree itself. So that one has launched into the stratosphere and come down like a nine iron. <laughs> but again, a very, very good shot. The spin there is gonna have climbed up, I would imagine, to about 4,000 yet. But again, a really, really nice shot. And that one was probably the best struck shot so far. And that's where you can see, although the smash factor wasn't as good as the one that I hit just before this, the launch angle was really high there. And that's kind of attesting to what Calai have said about this Max D. It's a really high launching club for those players that perhaps struggle to get it off the ground, struggle to hit it as far as they want to. So it is actually a really strong club to have if you are, if you are just not confident about your three wood, which I, I, I really am not. And I think I've saved the best one. I'll bite a bit aggressive till last there. And you can see that one, I think, although it was probably the best shot of the day, let's have a look at the initial numbers there and smash factor of 1.43. So you can see that I actually did strike that one a little bit low on the club face because spin rate is quite low there and it didn't actually go as far as I thought it would with the launch angle a little bit low, but you can't get perfect numbers wherever you strike it on the face. I'm just gonna hit a few more shots with this Callaway Fairway Wood and I'll give my final thoughts and see if it's a club to beat in 2022. Right guys, so that brings me to the end of this video. I've hit a lot more shots with this Max D and the main thing I am impressed by is the forgiveness. I don't think this year, apart from maybe a few select clubs, I'm gonna talk that much about the excessive distance because all brands kind of have maxed that out. But where you hit it across the club face, that's where your actual distance diminishes. I didn't feel that with this fairway wood, I actually got any real diminishing distance if I hit it out of the toe or out of the heel. I always feel that fairy woods are quite a scary club. You really do have to choose the right one. And I think if you were to choose the Callaway Rogue ST range, you'll be in safe hands. The Max D personally isn't the one for me just because it's a bit too high launching and slightly too high spinning. But I reckon the LS version could be the exact club that I would put in my bag. So I can't wait to try that out. There aren't any negatives I can really give in this video to this fairway wood. But when I do comparisons between TaylorMade, Cobra, Mizuno, you name it, I'll do it. That's when I can kind of give some feedback and if there's anything negative, basically on other models, I'll do it. If you guys have enjoyed this video today, leave a like down below. And if you've got any questions regarding the Rogue ST range, leave a comment too, and I'll be sure to answer it. If you guys are new to Golf Magic, hit the subscribe button too, because we've got a lot of very exciting videos from reviews to comparisons coming out in the next few months, so I don't think you guys want to miss it. But until the next video, guys, I will see you later.